Mike, you to do it at the, right before. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. We're still learning. We're still learning how to reach out to you in the most effective way. And the fact is that no matter how perfect we think we can do things, we're still in earth suits. And earth suits are subject to doing things a little bit different than what we might do them the way if, if God was doing them himself. But praise God, we're trying to get really pliable in the Lord's hand. Amen? We welcome you today. Praise God. On the screen right now, I want to start with this so you'll understand what Zechariah 12.10 says. Read it out loud with me. Say, and I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and pleas for mercy so that when they look on me, on him whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and weep bitterly over him as one weeps over a firstborn. This is, I believe, one of the primary scriptures that we need to read on the day that we're going into called Yom Kippur, which starts tonight at sundown. Yom Kippur, and will end on Monday night at sundown. A whole day. But this is something that's, as we were talking earlier here, before you, we tuned in with you, we were talking earlier that as believers in Jesus, this is not a day that we look forward to. This is the one part of this time that we as, as believers say it's already happened for us. In fact, we haven't received atonement. We have received redemption. We're reconciled to God. He has completely taken our sins and sent them away as far as the east is from the west. So far has he taken our sins away from us. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to notice that in Micah, chapter 7 and verse 18, this is a scripture that's read all the time at this time of year, but this one is so good. It says, who is God like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over transgression for the remnant of his inheritance? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in steadfast love. He will again have compassion on us. This is for the Jews right now. He will tread their iniquities underfoot. He will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. He's having compassion on us. He's casting all our sins into the depths of the sea, but he's already done it for us, amen? As soon as you received Jesus, that was the key. As far as the east is from the west, in the deepest part of the sea, he has cast your sins away, they're taken away. We see the scapegoat on this day as we study through this, this day of atonement, the Yom Kippur, when we study it. Remember, Kippur, comes from the word kapara. Kaparat is the mercy seat, the mercy seat of God. More than the covering, it has to do with what God is doing in this matter. Amen? He did it for those that couldn't receive it yet into their spirits. But I want you to know that as soon as you'll hear, as soon as you hear the word and decide, you know, I'm going to accept it, <laughs> you know, all you got to do really to get right with God is present yourself to Him. Say, here I am, Lord. I don't understand all of this. I don't know everything that goes on, but I'm presenting myself to you. And I believe if you said it, it's truth. Amen? Amen. And you do that, you do that, and he'll accept you. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. What a wonderful time we're living in. We had the privilege yesterday of watching Jonathan Kahn in Washington, D.C., and yesterday is a day that's known on the Hebrew calendar as Shabbat Teshuvah, the, the day to return, and that's what they called their whole thing, the return. But I want you to know that almost from the Capitol building, clear down the mall to the Washington Monument, there were people everywhere praising God, people crying out to God, 
And I don't believe that I've ever heard Jonathan, Jonathan under a stronger anointing than he was yesterday. The anointing and the way that he spoke yesterday, the calling forth, he called to Israel yesterday and he says, you and Israel, receive your Messiah. There's nothing more Jewish than receiving the Messiah. He received a, uh, a, 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 a letter. Something came to him from the president saying that he was in with them on this, that naming the name of Jesus Christ in a proclamation. And then he received a letter from a rabbi in Israel saying, we're watching. We're wa Praise God forevermore. There are powerful things happening. If this is not the year that Jesus will come, oh, we're getting so close. We're getting so close. Are you ready, people? Will you stay ready? Do not allow yourselves to slip back into the old ways of doing things the way you've always done them. Don't allow it. Amen? In the name of Jesus, praise God. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he taken our sins from us. Hallelujah. That's the celebration of the Day of Atonement. Amen? Praise God forever. We're so glad you're with us. Praise the Lord what a wonderful time to be alive. Amen. There are a lot of people said, oh boy, I just wish Jesus had come. Well, I do too. But I want you to know as long as I'm here, it's a wonderful time to be alive. Some of you are looking tired in your eyes. Get over it. Amen. Don't let tiredness take you over. If you let tiredness take you over, pretty soon you'll be weary. And when if you get weary, there's nothing to do but die. Did you know that? That's the next step after weary is die. Say, I'm not weary and well-doing. I will reap. I will not faint. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Well, we want to enter again today and remember. Well, I want to read this to you. You will show faithfulness to Jacob and steadfast love to Abraham as you have sworn to our fathers in the days of old. I told you that what's yet to be done in this day of atonement is for the Jews. For those whose eyes will be opened and they will see him whom they pierced. Amen. Praise God. Now I want to take you back to where we've been. The word of God is quick. Word of God's alive. You know, this will never grow old to me. I say this, this scripture will never grow old to me. People so often do things like this. They'll say, well, I've heard this so many times. You know, I can, I can repeat this in my sleep. That's not the key. The key is not that you can say something in your sleep that you've got it memorized. The key is not that, yes, I believe in getting the word hidden in your heart, but the key is in your heart that it's part of you, that you, you actually live like this, that the word of God, the anointed word, you could say, the quick word, the anointed word, the living word, the powerful word, the sharper word than any two-edged sword, is piercing to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit. We're still on it and we'll be on it maybe till Jesus comes because I want you to know more than anything else how to walk in the spirit, how to live in the spirit. In fact, today I want to talk to you about reality. I want to talk to you about your reality. Reality. We have reality. Did you know that some people live in an alternate reality. They don't live in truth reality. You know, every unbeliever in the world is living in a different reality, and let me caution you about following after them. You can't follow after somebody that lives in the reality like that, or they'll lead you astray. They'll lead you away from what really matters. And you need to let the Holy Spirit show you where this might be happening in your life. Don't let it happen. Don't let it take you over. Don't let the things of, of the flesh. How many remember the scripture says, Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Do you know how that's always been practiced? Is people look at a sinner person and say, I'm coming out from among them. Boy, I'm not going to get close to them. Somebody called me the other day and said, there was some guy in their building and she said, boy, he just looks so worldly. But she said, I began to talk to him and talk to him about Jesus. And she said, when I finished talking to him, he hugged me. And she said, somebody came to me, one of her friends came to her and said, don't you know that you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to do that? You're not supposed to, that's the appearance of evil. 
Oh, I want you to know religion will kill. Religion's a deadly thing. Yeah, he maybe didn't look like the picture of what people think of, of righteousness, but I want you to know that righteousness is an inward thing that's planted there by God. Amen? Righteousness is part of God. So when we say come out and be separate, we're not talking about that at all. God wasn't talking about that at all. Leaving all the sinner men to themselves. Don't get around them. Don't get where they are. No, he was telling you when you're around them, don't take part in what they do. But the bigger part is that we're coming out from among that way of walking in the flesh. The walk in the flesh is a deadly walk. The walk in the flesh is a hazardous walk. Are you listening to me? If you walk in your flesh all the time, you're going to make so many bad decisions. I mean, you're going to, you're going to have your pro and con list. You're going to have things laid out and say, well, I, I, you know, I know that this will happen if I do this and this will happen if I don't do it. And so you begin to do things that way and you never hear the voice of the Most High God who knows where truth lies. And that's what I want to hear, amen? That's what I'm calling you to today. As a matter of fact, I told everybody early when we started this service today, this is going to be a day of calling, and I'm calling a lot of you to play things of the, of the Lord today. I'm calling you to a closer walk. I'm calling you to come out from among them and be separate. Some of the people I've known, they've made some really good starts. In fact, some of the believers and ministers that I've known, they've made really big splashes to start out. You know, I'm not so much concerned about making a big splash. Big splashes come and go. In fact, one thing you know about every splash, it may look big for a second, but then it's just a bunch of little rings in the water. What I want is completeness and fulfillment. Say shalom. 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 Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Amen. Amen. We've been talking about the anointing. And we said that Jesus talked about his anointing. In Luke chapter 4, he told us, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me. And then he says there's four different ways. Proclaiming good news. Preaching to the poor. Opening blind eyes. Proclaiming the day of the Lord. Amen. That's what he said the anointing would do. And then Paul talking about it, let us know this wasn't just what Jesus did, but that same anointing was on the Apostle Paul. And he's speaking by the Holy Spirit, said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he said, my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power. I believe in the demonstration of the Spirit. I believe in power. I believe in the burden-removing Yoke-destroying anointing, amen? Do you believe in it? I believe in it. I believe it's supposed to show. I believe it'll show. You say, does it always show? No, there's sometimes you don't see what's going on. It's happening underneath. But it always is having an effect. It's always working. It's always doing something. Paul said, I didn't come to you with, with great educational signs. But I came to you with other kinds of signs, and they're signs and wonders that come from the Spirit of God. Signs and wonders. Last week we looked at the different ways people were led by the Spirit. Sometimes they were led to say things. Sometimes they were led to keep quiet. There was one time the Holy Spirit told Paul, don't preach the gospel in that place. Wow, that's powerful. That's powerful. Why? Not because God didn't care about those people, but because they weren't ready to hear the gospel. And sometimes when we speak something before we're supposed to speak it, all we're doing is forming a callus on people. Some of you that are sitting right now out in this, what's going on outside today? Oh, they're walking by with music. Okay, good. Well, that's all right. They're happy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul said, my speech and my message were not implausible words. In other words, so somebody could sit there and say, hmm, interesting. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, that's, that's good. Somebody told me at the end of that service the other day, I won't say it just the way he said it because he actually cursed. But he said, blank, 
you're a good speaker at the end of that service. And I'm going to tell you something. It didn't offend me that he said it that way. I wouldn't say it that way, but it did not offend me because that's the way he talks. That's the way he talks. And I said, why am I a good speaker? I'm not a good speaker. I'm not a good speaker. I'm not, I'm not a master of speech, and my message is not one of, of uh, polish. In fact, sometimes I stumble and stammer. Paul said, I've done that. But he says that the important thing is, is there a demonstration of the Spirit and of power? You know, you need to understand this. There is, for us, a way of living where there will be a demonstration of the Spirit and power, not just because I'm a preacher. In fact, let me just say to all of you today, you're all preachers. You're all supposed to preach. One way or another, you're preachers. You're supposed to say God's Word. You're supposed to speak God's Word to people. And let me tell you right now, do not be shy right now, but be led by the Spirit of God. Some people are so, and I, I mentioned this on Friday, some people have gotten timid about speaking God's Word. Do not be timid about speaking God's Word, but just make sure that God's saying, speak it. Amen? Amen. You see, the Scripture says in First. <laughs> Let me finish my scripture here. I've, I'm getting ahead of myself again. So that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. That's the reason we don't want to be uh, always, wow, he is just really good. He always has these long $5 words that he can say. Well, you know, $5 words don't do a bit better than 25 cent words. Amen? I don't know what a 25 cent word or a $5 word is, but you all have heard words. You didn't know what they meant when they said them. You had to get a dictionary if you cared, right? So why not say it so people can understand it? So that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Then the scripture talking to all believers says, but you. This is to all believers. I want you to know this is to all believers. John is speaking this in his first epistle. He says, but you have been anointed by the Holy One, by God. And you have all knowledge. Where is that? Well, say, I am a spirit. I have a soul. I live in a body. That's where it is. It's in your spirit. You already have the knowledge of God in your spirit if you're born again. I'm talking to born again people primarily today. If you're not born again, you can get born again before this time is over. Amen. If, if you have a, a healing need today, you can receive your healing before this before this time today is over, before this, before this time in which we get this teaching on, on the upload here that we're doing right now, you can receive your healing. How can you do it? By faith, by just saying, I believe it's mine. I believe it's mine. That's more important than seeing something. Believe it. Say it. Continue to say it. Say, I believe I have it. Say, I've taken it right now in Jesus' name. You have an anointing. You've been anointed. God has rubbed you with His very own self. We'll talk more about what it looks like. But it's in your spirit right now, and you're still plagued with natural mind trying to take over. We all have a natural mind. That's how we lived before we got born again. We lived only in our natural mind, and the only way we could do things then was by our best guess. I said the best guess. That's the way we did things. If you made investments, you, you may have studied a whole lot, but you know the fact is, a, a positive investment in the flesh is just that. It's just a guess. I'm guessing that this is going to go. No. You know, you've, you've made guesses about your travel. Some of you have decided to go places at certain times. And after you got on your way, you know all you ran into was bad weather. What was wrong with that plan? Well, it didn't have God in it. You know, a lot of times people say, well, if, you know, if, 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 if the Lord had just opened up the way before me, well, why not listen to him before? Amen. Now he did lead the children of Israel right up to the banks of the Red Sea. Amen. But boy, did he have a path ready for them. A dry land through the midst of the sea. And he'll do the same thing for us. I'm not saying you should turn back if the Lord says to go when the weather's bad. We can do it. But some of you just make your own plans. You plan, plan things according to all this little pumpkin head knows. And you know, we've got to admit, it's deficient. 
No matter how good it is, it's deficient. Amen? We're not made to be led by our natural minds. And we're made, you've been created, because you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you have all knowledge, but it's on the inside of your spirit. Now we need to get it transported over to where the natural mind can receive that revelation. Amen? Amen. 27th verse says, But the anointing that you receive from him abides in you. We read about Jesus' baptism. When he was baptized, when he was immersed on the river Jordan by John, when he was immersed at that time, John said, And I saw the Holy Spirit kind of come down like a dove on him. And it remained on him. And he said, The Holy Spirit, the one that sent me to Immerse people told me the one that you see the Holy Spirit descend on and remain, this is the Messiah. Amen? Now that anointing that you receive from Him because you've been born again abides in you. That's the same, same thought as remains. It remains in you. And you have no need that anyone should teach you. In other words, God doesn't want you to study barons so you'll know how to Invest your money. I really believe that. God does not want you to do that. And yet, I don't believe God is uh, against investing. He talks about it. He said that the wise servant took the money and invested the money. And he gained twice as much. Amen? The unwise servant is the one that didn't invest. Boy, I'll tell you what. You put your money in a savings account, that's almost not investing nowadays. <laughs> Amen? Almost not investing because there's not much return on that. But God knows a way to put things. Amen? He knows how to do things. And a lot of times it'll surprise you what he'll tell you to do with your money. If you want to invest it wisely, what might he say? Is he going to pick the wisest investment? No, he's apt to say, go give it to this person over here. Just give it to him. Just give it away. And you say, what? Give? He said, you do it. And my word says, give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. By the way, let me say thank you to all of you who give into this ministry. We appreciate it so much. We thank you for the tithes and the offerings that have been coming in here. They have been a blessing, and they are what enable us to continue what we do. But praise God, this is a work of the Lord, and I'm not ever going to stand up here and tell you that we're going to go under if you don't give. But if you feel led to give, we thank you for it. We appreciate it. Amen? Because we know that God is powerful to make all grace abound toward us so that we always, having all sufficiency in Him, may abound every good work. I'm telling you, this anointing we're talking about right here, this anointing will teach you to be at the right place at the right time. This anointing will tell you when to talk and when to keep quiet, when to hold your peace. Amen? This, this anointing, we call it being led by the Holy Spirit, is anything but common sense in the larger sense of things. Now, it's true that it is God's sense, but it's not common sense because common sense is flesh. Amen? Common sense is just the flesh. That's the flesh doing things. I people t have people tell me all the time, well, you don't want to do that. Uh, we're supposed to be wise. Well, you know, I believe being wise is just hearing the voice of the Good Shepherd, don't you? How could you do better than that? If the Good Shepherd says, come over here, I know you can't see anything. I know you can't see anything at all, just like he sent Philip out into the, out into the wilderness, into a desert area. But he ran into one man that he was supposed to lead to the Lord. And that one man went back into his land and led many to the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. You don't want to be led by men. Oh, there's a lot of men around telling us how to do things. There are people writing books all the time to tell you how to be godly. Well, some of them have godly principles in them. But some of them are psychobabble. Really. Some of the books that are being written, even by Christian ministers, are nothing but psychobabble. I'm okay, you're okay. That's psychobabble. We're not going to talk like that. We're not going to take things away from what God's Word says and try to say, you know, it's all right, everything's, everything's good. Or that old song they used to sing, everything is beautiful in its own way. 
No, it isn't. I said, no, it isn't. Everything is not beautiful in its own way. Some things are ungodly, and they need to be shunned. They need to be stayed away from. That's not the way to be led by the Holy Spirit. I want you to understand today, I'm calling you to understand this, that it's no longer you living in there. Your old man died. You know, we're so, we're so into our identity. I've heard of women leaving their husbands and going off someplace because they want to, want to find out who they are. Is that godly? Of course not. We have an identity and our identity is in Him. In Messiah. In Christ. You, you, some of you looked at me like that. You can imagine somebody saying that. You wouldn't believe some of the things people have told me that God has told them to do. And the reasons. And they just didn't hear God at all. All they were hearing was, was the desires of their sinful flesh. And it took them. Marriages have been broken up because of this very thing. Because people wouldn't stand. It's not you living in there anymore. Well, it feels like me. Well, there's a part of you living in there, but your old sinful man is dead. Do you know that? He died. He he had to. He had to die. If he didn't die, then you're still living the old man life, and you can't get into heaven in the old man. We have to have a new man. I know it's a little bit confusing. I heard Dwayne Sheriff talking about it the other day. He was talking about that. He said, you've got an old identity, all right, and it's in Adam. And even though you didn't sin, you were still a sinner as soon as you were born because you're in Adam. But because of what Jesus did when he died and took our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live under righteousness and by his stripes we were healed, Amen. 1 Peter 2.24. You can read that. Because he did that. Because he did that, we can say, it's no longer I that live. It's no longer me that's alive. I'm, I've been, I, the, the part of me that counts my spirit man has been united with Jesus. Amen. It's been united. And that old man, that old fleshly man, died. On the cross with him. Amen. Galatians 2.20 tells us, you all know the scripture. You all know the scripture. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in this flesh. This flesh right here. You can see it. You can see my flesh today. If, I, if you were all here in front of me, I could see your flesh. The ones that are here, I see your flesh. But that life that I'm living in the flesh, I'm living by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen? I'm crucified. Say, it's no longer I that live. But Christ, Messiah, lives in me. He lives in me. He's alive in you today. He's alive in you today. How did that happen? Well, it's an amazing miracle. It's supernatural. You say, I can't understand it. Well, most of us don't understand the supernatural completely. We get bits and pieces of it, but I'm telling you, it's an amazing thing. Scripture says, 1 Corinthians 6, 17, He who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Oh, I don't know if you know how big that is or not, but you need to let it sink. Listen, this is not so much taught as you'll catch it. Amen? This is the thing about the anointing. The anointing is not just a taught thing. The anointing is a caught thing. You need to catch on. Catch this thing. Recognize this thing. This is an amazing thing. He who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. There's not a whole bunch of Holy Spirits. There's just one Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit of God that came on Jesus is the same spirit that lives in you. Amen? If you're born again, the one that came upon you when you were crucified with Christ, when you accepted Him as your Savior, that same Spirit is in you. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. He dwells in you. 
and he'll quicken your mortal, your natural body. In other words, he's making life. Amen. There's a resurrection taking place. That old man died with Jesus, but it rose up with him in newness of life. Amen. Read, read Romans chapter 6. Read Romans chapter 6. You'll get it. 2 Corinthians 5.17. One of my favorite scriptures in all of the Bible. And I've only got about 14,000 of them. But this is sure one of them. And you may hear this one more than any of the other 14,000. You hear it a lot. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone is in the Messiah, remember we're of the same spirit he is. Just one spirit. We're one spirit with the Lord. If anyone is in him, he's a new creation. Say new creation. New creation. You know that happens when you receive Christ, whether you recognize it or do anything about it at all. That happens. I said, whether you recognize it or do anything with it at all, it has happened. You have become a new creation. You're born again. You're going to go to heaven, praise God. You're going to live with Him for eternity. But praise God, there's something great about what comes next. The old has passed away. And in a lot of people, they haven't allowed the old to pass away. They still live in the old. They live in old mindsets. They live in old traditions. They're living in their old identity. They're living in an old reality. There's a new paradigm, people. Jesus has, has introduced to us something that's mighty and powerful. It's a new way of living. We used to sing the song, I found a new way of living. I found a new life divine. I found the fruit of the Spirit. I'm abiding, abiding in the vine. Say abiding. abiding. That's us. Hallelujah. I'm in the vine with Jesus. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. I want you to see today. In fact, this is our last scripture for today. But I want you to see how the Amplified Bible puts that. Everything the Amplified Bible says doesn't make things clearer as far as I'm concerned. But I believe this one really helps. Some people read from the Amplified like it, it has every bit of it is the the authorized text. And sometimes some of the things that are added in can confuse things a little bit. We don't need that, but this does good. I'm going to encourage you not to, not to make the Amplified your only reading, though. You read it along with others, but you let the Holy Spirit teach you. Because some things, especially when you get into shades of meaning of words, don't always apply. We know that. We say words that every shade of meaning that could go with that word don't apply at times. Well, God has said things that he means a certain thing, and that's the only way we can know. But this says this, and I don't, don't know why I told you that. I, I believe the Holy Spirit must have done it because I have nothing against the Amplified Bible other than that I recognize this about it. And some of you may have been misled by some of the things you've seen in the Amplified Bible. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that he is, now it's explained it, grafted in, joined to him by faith in him as Savior. Grafted, and you know, I want to tell you that I believe even grafted lacks the fullness of what it means. Grafted. But if you're in Christ, if I'm in him, and he's in me, and we're one spirit, I've been grafted into him, and that, that does give a, an indication that the very life that's in him flows in me. And that's what the Spirit of God is. I have the life of God in me now because I'm born again. I'm a new creation. Grafted in and joined to him by faith in him as Savior. If anyone does this, he is a new creature. New creature totally new. You know, the outside may look the same, but the inside is brand new. Brand new. Brand new and undefiled. Listen, it's brand new and it's without guilt. No guilt in this new creature. No guilt. No condemnation. No sense of inferiority. Why? Well, how could we be inferior if we're grafted with him? How could we have guilt if we're in Jesus who never sinned? 
How could we be condemned? If he told us there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who are born of the Spirit. Amen? That's us. Reborn and renewed by the, I'm going to say it this way, by the same Holy Spirit. We are one spirit with him. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away Behold, new things have come. And here's the key to this. They have come completely in your spirit, but they need to keep coming in your natural mind. Because you still have a natural mind, but it can be renewed. They have come because spiritual awakening brings new life. That's powerful. Say, I'm already a new creation. I'm already a new species of being that never existed before. (laughs) Think about this. You know, there's a group of people sitting here today, and there's a group of people watching me today, born-again people, that are completely new, and their species has never existed before until the new birth. New species of man. And that's why... We walk in a completely different realm of truth. A completely different reality. Amen. Do you ever wonder why somebody can be so up when everything around them is down? I want people to think that way about me. I don't know how you can always be so positive when things are down. I tell you right now that some people, especially during the time in which we're living right now, they have reverted Believers have reverted to living like old men. Deb talked about it before we came on the air this morning. Deb talked about how believers are not taking their place. They're not calling forth those things which God says call forth those things which are not as though they are. You say, well, I can't do that. Only God can do that. I thought you were in Him. Say, I'm in Him. How many of you believe Jesus can do that? Call things which be not as though they are. Are you in Him? Then call those things which be not as though they are. I'm calling to those that have reverted to the old ways. There are people right now, they're doing other things when they ought to be putting God first. There are people right now that are not calling forth the the power and the anointing of God as they should be. I'm calling to you today. I'm speaking to you today. I'm calling you to a new way of living. I'm calling you into your new reality lifestyle. The fact is, it's already done in your spirit. Will you let it happen? Will you let it take over? It's up to you. Will you let the things of God that are in you take over? It's a choice. Will you let that anointing take over? Will you be bold in the Lord? Will you be willing and obedient? Then you'll eat the fruit of the land. That's what the Bible says. Amen. I'm calling you today. Make a change in the way you think. Make a change in the way you act. Make a change in the way you live. Think about your decisions that you've made. Some of you made decisions this morning. You've made decisions this morning. You've already made decisions. You've already decided things. That's not a way for believers to live. Believers are to live By the Spirit of God. Every decision we make should be based upon what He's saying in us. Amen. You say, well, that gets right down to every little thing. I don't care if it's the color of your shirt that you wore today. Ask the Lord. You say, well, does He care? If He doesn't, He'll tell you. Amen. If He says you can just wear whatever you look good in, that's all right. You could say, but I don't feel like I look good in anything. And he said, you look lovely to me. Did you know you look lovely to the Lord? Amen. I want a lot of you to understand this today. You're special. You really are valuable. You really are precious. And you're united in the Lord Jesus Christ. You're grafted into him by faith. And what you have is amazing. You aren't some kind of just a little cog that doesn't have any any major import in this life, you're important. People, some of you that are, 
that have decided, you know, it doesn't make any difference if I, if I give what I have to the body. I can just kind of do what I want to do. I can, get all of my, I can get all of my understanding by listening and reading and stuff like, no, no. You need to be a part of the body. You need to be a part of the body. You're robbing the body of Messiah. Your presence is important to the body of Messiah. I'm calling you today to recognize your import. Some of you travel around and go places and do things just based on your own whims. Let the Lord God show you where to go. Be like Philip. Be like Philip. No matter if you're in the middle of a great revival, hear the voice of the Holy Spirit saying, I want you to go over here in the desert. I've got somebody I want you to talk with. Be like, be like the people of, the, of old were that said, you know, I, my life is not my own. I'm bought with a price. Amen? So that's what happened on the Day of Atonement. The true Day of Atonement, when Jesus atoned, He did more. He reconciled. Amen? And He took our sins as far as the East is from the West. You're a new creation. I'm calling you to walk in it today. In Jesus' name. Father, we bless you. And we praise you. And we honor and adore you. We thank you for the privilege that's ours to gather together in the wonderful, precious, and mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as we've been calling today, we believe that the Holy Spirit on the inside of us is putting forth those words. Amen. We believe that those words have power. We believe that people are being touched and drawn by those words. We believe that the natural man that gets so strong in people is being weakened as the spirit man is growing stronger. The old things are passing away, and behold, all things are becoming new in your people, and we thank you for it. Lord, there's so many believers that don't understand the reality of who they are. There's so many believers that haven't taken what is theirs, made a decision to let it, let it come forth. They say they don't know how. They say they don't know what to do next. Lord, teach them what it is to just be led by the Spirit of God. Oh, teach your people to be led by the living Spirit of God, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the same Spirit that worked in Jesus, the Spirit that was in Jesus and that He put in us when He filled us with His Holy Spirit and said to us, The works that I do shall you do also these works, and greater works shall you do because I go to my Father. Thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. We're not done yet. We're not done yet, praise God. It's time for you right now, time for you right now to receive the blessing of the Lord. This blessing is not just a little thing. The blessing is what God spoke into existence, but then he said to Moses, tell Aaron to say this. By the way, I said this at Minnie's service the other day. And the reason I said it at many services is because many loved to hear the blessing. She loved to hear the blessing. She says, oh, I like that. I like that blessing. I like that blessing that you do at the end. So I figured it would honor her to speak it over the people that were around about. But God says something happened. She says, I'll put my name on them. I'll put my name on the people that will receive. Will you receive this blessing today? Everybody do like this. Take your finger up here. I know this is going to look real Catholic, but it's not. Go the other way. Make a big X on your chest. Yeah, you could make the cross if you want to. That's good. That's great. But there's a big X on your chest. X marks the spot. Amen? X marks the spot. I'm setting myself up as a target for the Lord. Amen? Amen. And when this blessing comes and he puts his name on us, I believe it'll be on you today. Some of you are going to experience something you've never experienced before as you hear this blessing today. Shalom. And Yahweh blesses you and keeps you and makes his face shine upon you and is gracious unto you. Yahweh lifts you right up into the light of his countenance and gives you his shalom. 
Nothing missing, nothing broken in the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God.